Hi there. My name is Ernesto Cisneros. I'm the author of Efren Divided, a story about a 12-year-old boy named Efren Nava whose life is turned upside down when his mom is deported, leaving him to fend for himself and his younger brother and sister in hopes that Amal will soon return. Uh, this story is very dear to my heart. Uh, I wrote this uh, during the times of the election when there was a lot of really horrible things being spoken about Latinos. Growing up, um, I know that I used to internalize some of the comments that I used to hear, and uh, I grew up with a sense of disentitlement, thinking that I wasn't as good as everybody else, and I really didn't want my, my kids, uh, both those at school and at home, growing up with the same sense of disentitlement. I know that it's a lot easier to hate people who you don't know, and so one of the goals for the, with this book is that I wanted to introduce America to an entire world to a family like mine, just a normal everyday Latino family, and so they could realize that we really are more more alike than we are different. And so, with that being said, I'd like to take a moment to read an excerpt of uh, *Half Divided*, and I'd like to start by reading first the first chapter. There we go. Chapter one. Once again, Efren Nava woke up to a chubby pajama foot in his face. He squinted at the bright yellow rays peeking in through the broken window blinds and looked to his left. But it wasn't Mia's foot. She was fast asleep, cuddled at the edge of the mattress with the same naked plush doll whose clothes she'd taken off and lost a long time ago. He looked to his right. Sure enough, the foot belonged to Max. How Max managed to roll over him during the middle of the night was beyond him. Efren shook his head and sighed. But then he caught a sight of a tiny hole on the right foot of his little brother's flannel onesie. Smiling, Efren licked the tip of his, finger, his pinky and gave a wet willy to Maxie's pudgy toe. Efren covered his mouth and stifled his laughter as the sleeping Max pulled away his leg However, the victory didn't last. Max spun around his sleep and planted his other foot in Efren's face. There was no way to win. Efren yawned himself fully awake before turning towards his parents out of the room. Once again, Appa was gone. No sign of his heavy jacket or scuffed up work boots by the front door either. It seemed no matter how early Efren tried getting up, he just couldn't catch Appa getting ready for work. Amma was the same way and never slept in. Any minute now, she'd wake up, unwrap her blankets, and go right to the kitchen to make breakfast. There was a, part, a pot full of leftover frijoles from last night's dinner, and that meant she would be for sure. She would for sure be making fresh sopes this morning, Efren's favorite. But before that, Efren had something important to do. He lifted Max's leg by the pajamas and got up, careful not to disturb Mia, who had now snuggled close to Max. Efren stepped over the pair of pint-sized legs and, and arms, blocking his path. He wasn't sure which was worse, sharing a mattress with two kindergartners or sharing the bathroom. Their apartment was really one big room, so the only place he could find peace and quiet was the bathroom. Efren looked in the mirror, wincing as he removed the tiny strip of tape pinning his ears back against the side of his head. An idea he came up with after repeatedly hearing a ma warn the little ones against making faces. Sus caras se les van a quedar así, she'd say. Their faces freezing? That's exactly what Efren counted on. It was only a theory, but if it were even slightly true, he guessed the same would apply to his ears. If he could manage to tape back his ears often enough, they too would eventually freeze and finally stop sticking out. All he had to do was make sure they folded in just the right way and for a few more weeks, and presto! normal ears that didn't stick out like the knobs on Frankenstein's neck. After taking care of business, Efren climbed inside the empty bathtub and read from his favorite book. Normally, Efren would lie in his tub reading and laughing until a stampede of feet came running towards the door. But on this morning, his eyelids were extra heavy and the need for sleep was too powerful. He couldn't fight it. Not after staying up so late, waiting for Ma to return from working overtime hours at the factory. For the last couple of weeks, there had been a whole lot of talk, a whole lot of chisme, especially around the laundromat, about various raids and stop points happening around town. Efren 
tried not thinking about what he'd heard in the news, but all the stories about families being separated, kids put in cages, but all, but all that was easier said than done. Efren couldn't help but worry. Despite numerous lectures from Amma he re and repeated threats of re being on the receiving end of her chancla, he stayed up really late until she got home. He'd done the best he could to piece together the information he heard, but it wasn't easy. It seemed like any time he caught adults talking about it, someone in the room would nod towards them and the topic would shift to something else, usually the final minutes of a telenovela. After an unplanned nap in the tub, Efren heard rattling in the kitchen and headed over. By the stove stood Amma, wearing her fuzzy blue robe that, according to Max, made her look like the cookie monster. Efren stood and admired how easily Amma formed perfect little saucers from the doy masa de maíz and then pinched the steaming edges to form a tiny wall to keep the beans from seeping off. Her hands were tough and hummingbird fast as she tested the griddle's temperature by touching it with her bare fingers. How she managed not to, to not burn herself, Efren wondered. How did she manage to not burn herself? Efren wondered. Amma sopas were delicious, and even though they weren't much more than thick corn tortilla topped with beans and fresh lanchero cheese, Efren didn't think of them as a poor person's meal. To him, to Max, to Mia, they were a special treat. Just one of the many milagros Amma performed on a daily basis. Something super. Super sopes. Sopes. Sopers. That made Amma soped woman. Efren laughed to himself, the word fitting her perfectly. I think I'm going to stop there. Hope you enjoyed. One of the hopes that I have for Efren Divided is that it finds its way into the hands of all the children around the world who find themselves in a similar situation to Efren. Um, to all of you out there, I want you to know that your voices matter, that you matter, and that your experiences matter, and that the world needs to hear from you. Uh, we need to hear experiences like yours. Um, to all the educators out there, or anybody who works with children like Efren, I'd like to remind you that as a society, we're very quick to dismiss children like, like him, um, to give up on them, to label them uh, as being kids at risk, when really, if we took the time to get to know them, we'd realize that they're not underperforming, they're simply surviving. Um, I really hope that Efren Divided serves as a reminder to the world that we do live in a world of immigrants. Uh, there's a lot of diversity out there. We're all very different, but by the same token, we're all very similar. Um, I really hope that uh, the story resonates with everybody out there. Efren divided the story of family, of friendship, and breaking down the walls between us. Um, I really hope you enjoy it. Thank you.